the B18C1 GSR head. This is stock core. This is my personal core. And we've started working on, the, on it a bit last year, but we stopped and you can see it's stock chambers for now. So we're going to work on that. Yes. And here we're going to finish it up and do the finishing touches. And of course, we'll show you every single step that we do with porting it like this, even the bolt work. Yes, and we'll go to the details on working on the chambers. And yes, here's the almost finished product. You can see it's almost done. We're almost there, but not yet. So, hey, you know, this one is for you. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Here's a personal core of mine. As you can see, we started working on it about a year ago. We just did the carbide stuff and also made a few pads, but you can see the chambers are still stock. So now we're gonna work on that a little later for you guys. Yes, now let's get to the workbench here. And now we spray some lube. And the thing is, the reason why it's crucial to spray the lube now is because this is actually on the second pass on the 80 grit. So we're gonna make sure the finish is good now. And of course the lube is 70% ethyl alcohol and 30% soapy water, but it all depends on your hands. So you, it's safe to start with 50-50. You know, you can start with 50% ethyl alcohol and 50% soapy water and see how it goes for you guys. But this is what works for me. As you can see, we're getting the finish good, cleaning it up well now. And we might make another pass on this just to get if we, we get to if we're not getting to the finish that we want, but we'll show you that later. We'll get to that. We'll see, you know, all right. As you can see on this phase, I constantly, constantly spray some lube on each pass. This makes sure the contours are good and the finish is really good. Now let's move to the chambers. I mean, sorry, to the bowls. Sorry, sorry. Okay, now let's spray some more. We'll make sure it's well lubed so that the finish is good. Now this is actually 120 grit. We, we usually do 120 grit on all the bowls and inclu including the all of the exhaust port or the whole exhaust port. So you can see it's 120 grit. It's a bit shinier and smoother. All right. Now we go with the lube some more just to make sure we can see the finish if it's good because this way it helps you see if there's bumps or ridges and of course we try not to eliminate eliminate every single ridge because we don't want to get the throat section a little too big because that will kill torque all right okay now since we're on 120 grit let me show you close oh yeah now it's getting there, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so since the porting bit is 120 grit, let's go straight to the exhaust now. Here it is. Okay, let me clip the phone here. Okay, spray some lube. Make sure it's good and easy. Yes. Now starting to take good shape in. This way, on the exhaust with 120 grit, it's actually easier to see there's unusual contours or inconsistent contours because we try to get it as possible to like, you know, we try to get from the f f valve seat to the throat all the way to the ex exit or to the transition when it joins join as one part to make it as circle as possible, as round as possible. I mean, it's kind of hard, but that's the main goal here without really, you know, trying to get too much of an area or increasing port area this way you don't kill airspeed now onto the exhaust bowls yep that's starting to look good now a bit more spray there guess just so we can make sure all right Spray some more on the last one here. Okay. Now let me show you this. Let me show you close. 
oh yes, now it's getting close to how we want it, right? Okay, so now, as we bring this head to the workbench, uh, after cleaning it, hit the like button, as that will help the algorithm get the video spread out to wider audience, so that will help me a lot out a lot so thank you for that so hey hit the like button and of course if you haven't subscribe this way you're going to be part of our community and we continue to discuss all the good stuff through the comments whenever we have a, good, a new post or a new upload so hey i'll expect you guys to subscribe so hey i'll see you guys in the community let's go let's go now as we get the head washed up let's go to the workbench now here it is oh look at that starting to look really good it's actually uh, almost done this could go good as as is, but we want to finish it better. All right, let's get close to the ports. As you can see on the right side or on the right side of this view, you can see there's some areas that we haven't touched because that is core shift. It is gotten deeper than it should or th than usual. So, but we're gonna get this cleaned up further because we feel like this can get a little bit better with a few more passes. So we're going to go back on that a little later. But hey, here's a picture of the port itself. As you can see, the short turn, which is above, is a bit wider. It's helping flow turn. So on this angle here, yes, as you can see, the port finish has gotten really, really good. That's good help from the lubricant that we do, that the, we do or we have as a mix. So you can see here, it's all good, right? Now on to the exhaust. Oh yeah starting to look really really awesome okay now to the picture or uh, with a better lighting sorry as you can see we're trying to get it as round as possible as you can see the light glare shows there's no abrupt change or ab abrupt bumps or curves so this is gonna be really really good and notice the divider we left it blunt we don't want it sharp because that becomes a heat sink when the engine is running so we don't want that so here you can see the finish is getting there. It, it needs a few more touches, but it's getting there. As you can see, the light curves, it shows the proper curve through the light. On this opposite side here, you can see, you can see that good, right? Now, let's have a look at the stock chambers here on the GSR. Here it is. Here's the stock chambers. Wait, let me turn the head here to show you guys. For, you know, some just basic cleanup that we do. Here, you see this sharp edge here? We try to round that off to make it a bit blunt to soften it. This way it's not really prone to pre-ignition. So it, it lets the tuner have more flexibility in tuning it or running it either richer or slightly leaner. There's no problem with that, especially on high boost. See, okay, now let's turn it again. Let's look at the exhaust side of things. Wait, let me turn it up. I'm just using one hand, sorry, because I'm holding the phone to show you guys. Oh, would you look at those parts? It looks really, really good, right? It's almost done. It's not just done, but it's almost. Okay, now here, let me close. Let's show you closer on the chamber. Here on the exhaust side of things, you see that? There's still a sharp edge. We don't totally remove it because then it doesn't no longer help the discharge coefficient of the flow after it passes the, through the seat and through the valve. So that's important, that area is important, but the sharp edges are definitely not needed. So we try to soften that up. This way it gets a more efficient chamber. All right, so now let's go back to the porting bench. Let's go, let's go. So now here we are with 80 grit and you'll notice we actually consistently spray lubricant on the surface. This way it gives us a good texture finish. And it's all about the lubrication or, and also the pressure applied on the sanding roll with your hands. That's why we can get this finish that we need or we want on 80 grit, but you constantly or consistently have to spray lubricant on it to get the desired finish. All right, now let me show you close. Okay, yep, this is the finish we want. Oh yeah, this one looks really, really good. And now it's time for the chamber. So let's flip the head here. Okay, we're gonna start working on it. We're gonna clean up, remove all the sharp edges. Here we're using 120 grit. 
because 80 grit is okay but it tends to carve out too much so we just try to soften it up with 120 grit and we used uh, spare blank valves just to protect the seats of course right there okay now we take all the valves we get to finish all the edges on the other side here we inverted it yes it's getting there it's getting it's starting to look really really good and now here we can show you wait let me unclip the phone and show you guys how it is close here let me show you oh wait you look at that you see the sharp edges are all softened up it's still there but we just curved it and blend it nicely this way it's not going to be prone to pre-ignition and of course we did a few passes on the exhaust on 120 grit here it is with enough lubrication of course we gotta finish how we want it so yep this is about good to go so we're gonna clean it up but we're gonna do a bit of touch up on the bowl work first on the intake and the exhaust on 120 grit this way you can see that the intake how it varies from the throat from the port into the bowl then we clean up the head and bring it to the workbench here it is we actually inked up with die cam the flange again this way it looks cleaner all right you can see look at that port finish it's right on the money this is how we like it yes sir yes sir look at those the glare of the light it shows you how the shape is consistent on all four right okay so now let's look at it closer with light here you go and you can you notice towards the bowl near the throat it's 120 grit finish that's why it the shine is a little different but the rest of the intake parts from the entry all the way to the bowl is one is 80 grit and we actually made sure it's well lubricated when we're grinding or you know sanding doing using the sanding roll to give us this good finish and it's all about the pressure because if you use 120 grit or finer it just gives it a weird shine and look at that arrow of the injector boss oh yeah that's consistent because the light is showing the pattern and here's a picture of it as you can see it's all good now even the core shift is still okay at this angle you can see the port finish changes towards the bow and that is okay and that's good in our in our book and here's the other angle you can see the light the sh the, the shine the curve you can see it's quite consistent right and you can see here on the short turn yes left and right is all good it's widened a bit but not too much and here the guide boss or the injector boss yeah that's an arrow right there right okay now before we go to the exhaust part let me show you the chambers wait let, let me remove the socket here okay there now let me turn turn the head a bit side sorry about the shaky i'm just using my hands with the phone let's look at those finish of the intake ports oh yeah okay let's slant the head a bit to show you the chambers as you can see the line wait let me get the pointy thing the red one oh, here you can see this was a sharp edge and now it's rounded off you know made, made it a little bit more blunt softened it so now this is less prone to pre-ignition and that's definitely a good thing for all motor especially on turbo because you know any pre-ignition you have on force induction we might see a cracked sleeve and i'm sure you guys have seen that oftentimes here let's turn it a bit oh you look at that exhaust yeah let me show you the short turn here because we don't really show this oftentimes you see we didn't really put and too much on it we just made sure it smoothed out and the curve is consistent on all of the short turn of the intake and now let's go close to the exhaust port with light here you go the hardest part here at least for me is making it consistently round from the seat to the bowl into the individual port before it joins up together but you can see the glare on the roof and the floor that's consistent right and we made sure the divider is not sharp because that's going to be a heat sink so 
we make sure the divider is a little bit blunt. This way, it's not going to be a heat source, you know? Because, hey, if the material of the head gets hotter than usual, we can see pre-ignition. Oh, look at that. The port finish is really good. Here, let's see it on the other side of the chamber from the side of the exhaust. You can see here the intake. I mean, sorry, the exhaust. It's all blunt up. There's no more sharp edge. Now, this is going to be really, really nice. Not prone to pre-ignition. So the tuner will have a better time trying to exert much power or maximum power out of the engine when they're using this. But of course, them is me because this is my GSR cylinder head. So, yep, this is going to be fun project. We're going to use it on the B20 VTEC. And of course, on the description, we'll have this video. This is two years ago. We did this PR3 B16A head for a CRV with a B20 VTEC. It made two, that much power. And of course, the comparison between B16 and GSR head, the technical differences. And of course, the crowd favorite, this. This shows you what we know this makes a good port or a bad port. It'll all be in, in the description below. But to make it even better, the end screen will have a playlist of the shop work that we do, including all of these. Now let me show you something interesting here. If you look closer inside the ports, not the chamber or not the seat, but inside the ports, you can see the glare of the light will show you the shape of the intake port on how consistent they are. Let's wait, let me show you. There, you can see inside that lie the curve left and right is equal see that yep and that's how you you know one of the ways to check you can make sure the work is good yep this gsr head is gonna make some good power at least on my own project it's you know it's gonna be easy to 45 to 250 plus wheel horsepower pump gas on a street setup so yep maybe soon because I'm still running a single overhead cam. And of course, on the playlist, we have all the B series, D series, K series, and even H series head, head porting we do and all those other shop works. So, hey, you know that? You can click here for that one.